Example 2. Two ships A and B are 20 kilometers apart with B due north of A. The first thing that I like to do is of course to go have a good idea of how uh, your ship A and ship B looks like. Okay, where, where are they and uh, how are they moving relative to each other, isn't it? So let us call this point B the ship B and of course this will be our ship A, right? Because B is due north of A. So they are 20 kilometers apart. Okay. Now we also know that ship A is traveling at an angle of at a bearing of 60 kilo, uh, 60 degrees. All right. So this is our ship A. So this is our VA, which is at 10 kilometers per hour. Okay. So from the question as well. So ship B is traveling at a direction of um, 135 degrees. So 135 degrees looks a little like this. Okay, so this is um, 135 degrees. Okay, so our VB will be traveling at 8 kilometers per hour. Alright, so this diagram more or less summarizes what um, the question is all about. Okay, so the first thing, part A, asks us to find the velocity of A relative to B. So it's similar to what we have seen in example 1. Okay, of course we're not going to use uh, the animation anymore, so we're just uh, going to just quickly go through doing the way that we will do in exam. Okay, so part A. Since we're looking for the velocity of A relative to B, it means that we're looking for the velocity of A minus the velocity of B. But uh, we have to first draw the vector diagram, isn't it? So the vector diagram... Okay, vector diagram of course refers to VA vector and the VB vector. Okay, how are we gonna draw this? All right now, first of all, we need to. Uh, <clears throat> I think this time around, I'll draw a little bit bigger. Okay, so draw a vertical line. Okay, because this time around, since they are your our ship A and ship B are moving uh, towards the right side. Okay, so we draw a vertical line. We start off with a point, and we shall call this VA. Okay, now, and then uh, from the same point, we'll have our VB. Okay, since we know from part B's question, okay, that ship A will be exactly due east of B, it means that there comes a time where your A will be exactly to the right of B. Okay, so meaning to say, relative to B, according to B, right, A should be moving upwards. So looking at the part B's question, all right, sort of help us to figure out how do we want to slant this this uh, final vector here. Okay, do we slant it to the right or do we slant it to the left? Okay? So uh, we mentioned this in example 1. So for those of you who are still a little bit confused, uh, please take a look at example 1. Okay? So we look at uh, what this tells us. Therefore, we know that it slants to the this slants uh, to the right. Okay, so this is our VAB. Okay, as per what we have talked about as well, this is our subtraction law. Alright, vector A minus vector B is this vector. Okay, so then after we've drawn this picture, all we have to do now is to fill in the blanks. Okay, so uh, fill in the blanks meaning to say put in all the necessary information that we already know. Okay, so this is 10 kilometers per hour and this is 8 kilometers per hour uh, of course we also know the bearing isn't it we know that this bearing is 60 degrees okay and we know that uh, for the vector B this is 135 degrees which means that this will give us 45 degrees and therefore this angle inside you can you know easily calculate this to be 75 degrees okay so now here we are we have this um, vector diagram and I think we are ready to go Okay, we're ready to get our to solve the question for part A. All right, part A asks us for the speed of uh, this vector. So of course we'll let the speed of this vector be x kilometers per hour. So studying the diagram, the triangle that we already have, to find x is no big problem because we have got eight, okay, and we have got ten, and we have got the angle to seventy-five. So using our cosine rule, our x square, okay, is equal to eight square plus 10 square minus 2 times 8 times 10 cosine 75 okay so from your calculator all right you can get x as um 
eleven point zero seven two kilometers per hour. All right, so this shall be our speed of ship A relative to ship B, represented by this vector here. Okay, so I suppose some of you may still find this um, sort of uh, difficult, okay, because uh, I've seen a lot of students who actually have a very hard time trying to figure this vector diagram out. Okay, so bear in mind there are two steps to this vector diagram. The first thing that you have to know very well is your subtraction law. Okay, from vectors. Second thing that you have to know is uh, how to analyze the question and in order to help you um, draw your direction of your relative vector correctly. Okay, you don't want to be slanted to the left when the, sh the, the question is talking about, you know, ship A is going to be due east of B. Okay, so uh, because this time around it is quite difficult for us to use the magnitude of the vector to help us decide because this is 8 and this is 10. Now, so 10 obviously must be longer than 8, but the problem is the the difference is going to be quite minute. Okay. Besides that, and you have angles that make them more difficult to see. You know, how are you going to be slanted to the left or right? Okay. So short of uh, drawing actual diagram um, using projector, you know, scale diagram using projector, this is how we actually figure things out. We look at the question as a whole. All right. So take some time. All right. Try it on your own, okay, and and of course um, try to learn at the meantime. Okay, what's going on here? Okay, so we have got the speed. The next thing we need is of course the bearing, isn't it? Direction. Okay, so the bearing of this vector, of course, we will go to the tail of the arrow, draw a north. Okay, and of course this will then be the angle that we are interested in. Okay, so we study the triangle and we see, okay, how are we going to get this blue little angle here, isn't it? Now, the first thing that we must take notice is this. We do know that this angle here is 45 degrees, isn't it? Well, and because this is north, and this is also north, they are parallel. Okay, so this is 45 degrees, we'll make this 45 degrees as well, isn't it? So, take a closer look at the triangle. You have all three sides of the triangle and you have one angle inside. Now, do you think you can find this big angle here? Okay? It shouldn't be too much of a problem, isn't it? I mean, to get this big angle, we ha all we have to do is to simply use our sine rule. Okay? So, let us scroll down a little bit. Okay? So, to use the sine rule, we'll have 10 over sine... Um, oh! Sorry, we shall call this angle alpha. Otherwise, it will be very hard for us to denote or show our working. Okay, so 10 over sine alpha is equal to x, which is 11.072 over sine 75 degrees. So cross multiply, inverse sine, yada yada. Okay, you will get the angle of 60.74 degrees. Alright, now at this point, I would like to spend a little bit of time talking about case of ambiguity. As uh, some of us, I mean, most of you, I hope, okay, knows that whenever we use sine rule, okay, whenever we use sine rule, we always end up with two answers. Alright, what do you mean by always end up with two answers? Well, simply to say that um, sine rule, sine to be positive, they are always, uh, you know, it's either in the first quadrant or the second quadrant. So the first answer is the acute answer which is in the first quadrant second answer will be the obtuse angle which is in the second quadrant so how do we decide which is which so like i mentioned again before in uh, the previous um, examples okay it is very very important that you get you get this diagram correct okay so according to the diagram here all right now this has to be an acute angle okay this can't be obtuse otherwise you'll be too far off Alright, because again, bear in mind that this is 10, this is 8. Alright, so they should look more or less about the same length. You are not going to draw an obtuse angle. Now, imagine that it's an obtuse angle, so you'll look like this. Okay, so that will make our VA extremely long, isn't it? Or even maybe even parallel. So, no, that's not uh, the way. Okay, so uh, we have to be able to see how our numbers here relate back to our 
uh, diagram here. So of course, in obvious cases whereby it has to be obtuse angle, then of course we'll reject this one and get the obtuse answer instead. Okay, so um, do go find out more about your case of ambiguity. In fact, it's in elementary math. Okay, when we first learn on uh, trigo. Okay, so um, here we are. We have alpha as 60.74 degrees, and therefore the required bearing. Okay, the required bearing that we are supposed to find will be, of course, 60.74 degrees. All right, minus away 45 degrees. So that will give us the answer of 015.74 degrees. So this will be the bearing of the vector A relative to B. Okay, so this is the part A's answer. I hope so far so good for most of you. All right, let's go on to part B. Find the time to the nearest minute. Okay, for the ship to be exactly due east of B. Okay, so this is when uh you know same as similar as uh, what we talk about in uh, the first example, All right? Uh, we need to draw the distance diagram. Okay, so the distance diagram. Okay, it's a pity that we can't see the rest of the diagram as we were drawing as we are going to be drawing the distance diagram because it's actually quite useful to have a look. Okay, so I shall just scroll back and forth. Alright, now first thing here is the distance diagram. Of course, we must then understand that uh, you know we have to take into consideration the initial position. Okay, so initial position looks a little like this, isn't it? Alright, so let us uh, scroll back to our empty space here. Alright, so initial position initially B is here while A is here, and they are separated um, 20 kilometers apart. Okay, so it looks a little like this. All right, now the next thing that we have to comp uh, to find out is, um, of course, our part A's answer, which is the relative vector. Okay, so this is our relative vector. So we know that this relative vector tells us, all right, the velocity of A relative to B. So meaning to say, according to B, B is watching A moving up this way. Okay, so in example one, we 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 show you the. Um, Animation, okay, to 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 see what is going on. So here we're not going to show you another animation. So we're just going to use um, what we have, all right? Same as what we are going to be doing in exam, all right? So according to B, A is moving upwards this way, okay? Represented by this vector V A B, okay? So there comes a time whereby your A will be directly due east. Of your B, so that will make this a 90 degrees, isn't it? So, what are we looking for? We are not looking for the distance this time. We are looking for the time, okay, for the ship to be ship A to be exactly due east of B. So, what are we supposed to do? Well, we're supposed to figure out how long it takes, okay, for this A to be moving, 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 moving to this point, okay, such that it's directly due east of B. So again. Remember what we learned before, time, time is equal to distance divided by speed, and therefore, uh, well, we have, do have the speed, isn't it? We have the speed, okay, from our part A's answer. We have the speed of the relative vector, which is 11.072 kilometers per hour. So this is the speed. And therefore, of course, th what do you think we need now? We need the distance, isn't it? Okay, so we need the distance, and before we can even find the distance, we have a distance of 20 kilometers here, but we need a distance, the actual distance that your A will have to travel, isn't it? So, we need an angle. Okay? So, and that angle will come from this bearing, because this is the bearing of 15 degrees, okay, is referring to this blue little shaded angle here. So, this blue little shaded angle here, in turn, is the same as this angle, isn't it? Alright? So, we do know that this angle here is our 15.74 degrees. So now here we go, we have a right angle triangle. All right, we have an angle that we know of 15.74 degrees and we do know a distance here, okay, the adjacent distance of 20 kilometers. Do you think we will have a lot of problem finding the hypotenuse distance? Obviously not, isn't it? I mean, it's just as simple as using a trigo. Adjacent over hypotenuse, we will use cosine. So cosine 15.74 degrees is equivalent to the 20 over ah again okay 
I shall denote this as y kilometers. All right. Otherwise, it'll be quite difficult for us to explain what's going on. Okay. Over y. Oh, there's no need to put the kilometers there. All right. So cross multiply. We'll get our y as um. Let me see. Twenty point seven seven nine kilometers. All right. So this is the distance. All right. Of um our vector VAB. So to find the time for A to reach this point, okay, we simply have to take the distance of 20.779 divided by its speed of 11.072. So that will give us the answer of 1.877 hours. But since the question required us to leave our answer in minutes, so we shall get it as uh, one three three. Oops, I'm sorry. It should be one one three. I mean, okay, one one three minutes. And there we go. This is our part B's answer. All right. I hope you are following so far. Okay. If not, please, uh, you know, take it slowly. All right. Rewind and watch it again, and rewind and watch it again. Look out for the important things that I highlighted. Okay. So now, part C. Ask us to find the nearest distance between the two ships. Okay. Now, what's the story so far? The story is that well, we have two ships that are so far apart. Ship A moving this way, ship B moving that way, and we figure out that they are not on collision path. Okay, we'll talk about collision path in the next example. All right, how do we figure out whether are they colliding or are they not colliding? So they are not colliding. Okay, so they simply cross each other's path, and this is precisely what happens. Okay, so B will see A moving past it this way. All right. So now we're really interested in, uh, you know, the nearest distance between these two ships at any point in time. So the nearest distance that all, as all of us know. Okay, of course, refers to the perpendicular distance here. Okay, so this perpendicular di distance will be the nearest distance in any point in time our A and B will be. All right, so we shall denote this as Z. Okay, the nearest distance. So to find the nearest distance Z, I don't think it's that difficult because you take a look at this. This is another right angle triangle, isn't it? Okay, maybe I use another color so that I can highlight to you. Okay, that this is another right angle triangle. Oops. Okay, this is another right angle triangle. Okay, with the right angle here. All right. So you do know that this is. 20 kilometers, and you do know that this angle here is 15.74 degrees. So to find our distance of z, okay, shouldn't be too much of a difficulty, isn't it? Opposite side, hypotenuse side. So we use sine, okay. So sine 15.74 degrees will give us z over 20, and therefore z from the calculator will give us 5. Point four two five kilometers and there we go this will be the nearest distance the two ships will ever be okay and this is it